This is Genesis chapter 35 and verse 18. And it came to pass, as her soul was in departing, for she died, that she called his name Benoni, but his father called him Benjamin. Brock for Yahweh, Brock for Yahushai. Brock for Yahweh, Brock for Yahushai. Brock for Yahweh, Brock for Yahushai. All praise to Yahweh, Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Kagadash. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father, who the world calls God. And Yahweh is the true name of His only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Double honors to apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel. The nation of Israel consists of you so called Black Hispanic Native Americans. You make up a, you make up the twelve tribes of the nation of Israel today. And if you do not look like a typical black Hispanic or Native American, you can still be an Israelite. Through your father's seed line, your father's lineage. If your father's lineage goes to back to an Israelite man. And your spirit bears witness, your spirit's proof, it is evidence that you are Israelite because you're drawn to this 100% word, you accept this word, you believe in the living waters, which is this gospel, which is good news, okay? You believe in this light, okay, which is the which is the word, and you fit the curses of Deuteronomy the twentieth chapter. I'm the brothers of car from the Great Millstone Plain Tables Camp in Philadelphia, PA. And the topic of this video is going to be the tribe of Benjamin West Indians. The tribe of Benjamin West Indians. So if you're a so-called West Indian watching this, you are not a West Indian. That's not your actual ethnicity. That's not your actual heritage of reality. Okay? According to the Bible, there's 18 nations. Okay? And there's a chosen race of the Most High that the Bible focuses on. All right, and that's the nation of Israel, okay? You so-called West Indians, your actual heritage is a so-called, not a so-called, but an Israelite, according to the Bible, all right? The heritage you're following is a wicked culture that's not according to the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. Who the world calls God. That's not the culture you should be following. Okay. When I say you so-called West Indians. Alright. You got the 12 tribes of the nation Israel. Okay. You actual West Indians. You're from the tribe of Benjamin. Okay. The last son of Jacob. Alright. And if you go... Let's go to a West Indian map, all right? You'll see, okay, Jamaica, the Bahamas. You got the Virgin Islands, St. Martin, Barbuda, Antig Barbuda Antigua, Slack here, Mount, S Mount Surratt, St. Kittis, right? Mount Surratt, Slack here, Guadalupe, Dominica, Martinique, St. Lucia, Barbados, St. Vincent, Grenada, Grenada, Slockier, and Trinidad and Tobago. All right. These, all right, islands, okay, Jamaica, and also the west coast of Africa. All right, a lot of you West Indians, all right, you're from the tribe of Benjamin, okay? An uh, Israelite, according to the Bible, the chosen race of the Mosai, the Mosai's special, peculiar people. That he chose to give the law, statutes, and commandments to. Not to every nation that's on this planet. Okay? Because every nation, okay, is not the most high's children. Okay? Let's get Deuteronomy 7 and 6. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy power. So holy meaning separate. The Lord thy power have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. 
above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So the Mosad chose the Israelites to be a special people unto himself. Above all people. So above all people is better. That's a higher value. That's not equal. So the everyone equal doctrine that's pushed out in America is not true. It says that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you because you were more in number than any people. For ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, had the Lord brought you out of the mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Okay. To the most, the Lord had to keep his oath which he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Right. Slacky, which he made with Abraham, are of course, through the seed line of Isaac, then of course to Jacob. Okay. So the name Benjamin, okay, it means in the Hebrew Strong's H eleven forty four. Benjamin. Benjamin. It says Benjamin, but actually in the ancient Hebrew the Lashuan Kandash, the holy tongue, it's Ben Yumyun. Okay? Ben Yumyun. And it means it says Benjamin, son of the right hand. Okay, so son of the right hand. Okay. So a typical all right, West Indian family, typing typing in on Google, West Indian family. All right, you got these people right here. Okay, typical look, all right. You're from the tribe of Benjamin, okay. The, the culture of being a West Indian, all right. Partying and bullshitting at carnival, all right. Doing witchcraft, all right. Black magic, okay. Believing in all these churches, Going into these churches thinking these churches had the truth. Okay. That culture needs to end. All right. Repent to the God of Israel. All right. And follow the guidelines, the gospel of, of Great Millstone, which is the 100% truth. Okay. Why is it the 100% truth? Because the doctrine never fails. All right. And through the Spirit, the Most High confirms. All right. That we have the truth through prophecies. Okay. The prophecies. All right, that, of course, that are projected are all based on the scriptures. Okay, the RFD microchip, which is the mark of the beast. Okay, America's destruction, which is Babylon the Great America. Okay, they're going to happen. All right, they're going to happen soon. World War Three, rumors of wars. Okay. They're going to happen. And the most sides will confirm that the great millstone has the 100% truth. Okay. So you're from the tribe of Benjamin. You're not a so-called West Indian. All right. And your real heritage just didn't start when you're in the island of Jamaica, the Bahamas. Okay. Or, or even in West Africa. Okay. Your real heritage is from the most high. How about Shemion Shad? And West Africa is not the motherland. Okay. It's the Middle East. Okay, what you will call Jerusalem. All right. So you need to wake up from darkness, come back to the Lord, because the Most High is going to punish a lot of people of this world. Why? Because they are wicked. Okay, how are they wicked? Because they're not following the guidelines that the Most High wants them to follow. They think this world revolves around them, they have pride. Everyone. A lot of people think they have free will. People don't uphold the laws of the Bible. People don't believe that the Most High exists. People change and add to the Most High's word. Okay. And people are just not following the guidelines of life. Okay. That's a lot of people. And the Most High is going to punish two thirds of the nation of Israel. Okay. So called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans. He's going to punish them. And you don't, you do not want to be part of that punishment. All right. 
So you need to seek the Most High while he may be found during this grace period. Before the doors of mercy shut, and they are going to shut soon. This is Romans chapter 8 and verse 16. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of Yahweh. So the Spirit is, is this word. That's the Holy Spirit. So this word itself beareth witness. To bear witness, when you have a witness going to court system, they have to give proof and evidence about the case. So bearing witness is giving proof, is giving evidence. So this word, it's proof with our spirit, so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans. We are the children of God, the children of Yahweh. That's his real name, meaning he is. Okay. So this spirit, the spirit shall bear witness of our spirit that we are the children of Yahweh. Okay. How? Through the indicators in the Bible. Or the indicators, curses that fit so-called black Spanish Native Americans. That was that the Israelites went through, okay? That the Israelites were to go through because of this their disobedience. And there's certain people on this earth that are going through the curses of the Bible. Absolutely. Okay? So it's no doubt about it that those people are the Israelites, according to the Bible. God's chosen race of people. So let's get some curses. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Let's first start at 15. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy power, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So you disobeying the Most High and not following his guidelines, Curses were going to befall you. And a curse is not something good. Okay? It's not something positive, being cursed. Okay? The majority of Israelites are wicked. Okay? And the majority of Israelites are wicked. The Most High puts the whole nation of Israel into captivity. Okay? He puts all of them into captivity. And the, the ancient Israelites have been in captivity under all heathen nations. Okay, and this captivity in America is nothing new because the Israelites were in captivity under Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Slaki of Pharaoh, the uh, Egyptian uh, leader. Okay, so let me get a major specific curse that points to Israelites being the so called black, Spanish, Native Americans. Let's get Deuteronomy 28 and verse 54. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil toward his brother and toward the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. Okay, so when it says, so that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil toward his brother. That's your kinsman. That's your family. Your brother having an evil eye towards you, okay? Looking at you with envy, looking down upon you, wanting to kill you, wanting bad things to come upon you. That would be a curse, okay? That would be a curse to show who the Israelites are, okay? That would be for the Israelites. It says, and toward the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave, okay? So an Israelite man leaving his children. So let's ask, what specific type of male on this earth, okay, what nation of male men are known for leaving their children, are known for having an evil eye toward their own brothers, fighting each other, okay? That's so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, all right? They are known for having an evil eye toward their brother and leaving their children. Of course, when they hit their wife, right, lay with their wife, okay, and they leave her when the kids are about to come, all right? That's a specific thing these 12 tribes do, the men of these 12 tribes, okay? So that's one indicator that shows 
the nation of Israel, so called Black Spanish Native Americans. Let's get more. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 56. The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not venture to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness, her eye shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom and toward her son and toward her daughter. Okay, so an Israelite woman having an evil eye toward her husband. So what woman on this earth are known for having an evil eye toward their own husband, wanting bad things to come upon them, trying to set them up in traps, seeking to ruin and make their life miserable. That's the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American woman. Okay? Always yelling at their um, spouse. All right? trying to set them up and put them in jail a lot of these women do that try to use the government system against them that's the so-called black speaking Native American woman right with that attitude okay no respect no respect of authority it says her eyes shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom and toward her son and toward her daughter so and of course, through the spirit, it says, and toward her son and toward her daughter, so-called black Hispanic Native American woman, all right? A lot of them, when they have children, don't raise them the right way <laughs> and don't treat them right, okay? And that's a curse that fits so-called black Hispanic Native Americans, all right? That makes you know that that shows you they're the Israelites. So let's get... One more, this is the main point, and this moved, of course, to the tribe of Benjamin. Specific indicator that show U.S. Indians being the tribe of Benjamin, okay, Ben Yumyun, son of the right, okay? It's, this is Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, by the way, whereof I spake unto thee. So this is a curse that befell Right, and it happened to the Israelites. And we know that the Israelites went to Egypt and were under captivity under Pharaoh. So it says, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So it says again, with ships. And we all know that from Egypt and from the Holy Land, you could walk there. Because that's what the Israelites were doing. They were walking there. So when it says with ships, why would the Most High bring the Israelites to the same ancient Egypt again with ships? All right. When they could just easily walk there. Okay. Because this precept is not talking about the exact ancient Egypt. He's not talking about the exact one. He's talking about a new Egypt. Okay. And let's get what Egypt means. Deuteronomy 5 and 6, I am the Lord thy power, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. So house of bondage. Okay, bondage meaning captivity. Okay, slavery. So, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So captivity again with ships. And what nation of people are known on this earth for going to captivity in ships, specifically ships. That's the so-called, specifically the world knows the Negroes. Okay, but it was U.S. Indians and Haitians as well. Okay. And a lot of history that people do not know is that Hispanics, Native Americans as well, as well went to captivity in ships. All right, before so-called Negroes and West Indies and Haitians did, okay? They were being shipped to Europe, okay, and being moved around in ships, okay? This is real history. This is just real reality. This is just evident, okay? Let's get, let's go back to Gen... Durami Slakia. Let's finish off the verse. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, by the way whereof I spake unto thee, 
thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. And no man shall buy you. Okay, so being sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. Another name for that is slave man and slave woman. When it says, and no man shall buy you, it's talking about no man shall free you. Okay? You will be in captivity. You're not going to escape it. You are going to captivity no matter what. It says, thou shalt see it no more again. Okay? It's talking about the Holy Land in Jerusalem. All right? So specific indicators that show so-called black Hispanics and Native Americans being the Israelites. This is Amos chapter 3 and verse 1. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. So the Mosai is only dealing with the nation of Israel. So that's what it means when it says known. Okay? You only have I known. Okay? Dealing with them. Giving them the laws, statutes, and commandments, the guidelines of life. Okay? It says, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Okay? So, punishment. That's why the Most High is punishing you Israelites. That's why so many bad things happen to you West Indians. Okay? Hurricanes. All right? Uh, um, bad things happen to um, so-called Haitians earthquakes all right bad things happen to um you had the um the hurricane in puerto rico you to you puerto ricans ephraimites that's why so many bad things happen to all you tribes all right israelites because you're cursed from the most high you're cursed that's why you're in these poor countries living in the ghettos so-called negroes all right you got Native Americans living on reservations. You're cursed. It's a punishment. All right. Because the Most High is dealing with you. And since he's dealing with you. And if you don't follow his guidelines. Curses are going to fall on you. Just like a uh, father whips his children. Okay. Same concept. So. Let's of course get to Genesis chapter 49. And verse 1, it says, And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together and hear ye sons of Jacob and hearken unto Israel your father. So Jacob being right, the father of the twelve tribes of the nation Israel, telling his sons what's going to happen to them during the last days. Those would be specific indicators that we would know which tribe is which. Okay? So, let's get to the point. It says, Benjamin, Genesis 49, verse 27. Benjamin shall raven as a wolf. Okay? In the morning he shall devour the prey, and at night he shall divide the spoil. So it says, Benjamin shall raven as a wolf. When it says raven, okay, you look this word up, it will say Hebrew word. Strong's H2963. Taraf. Taraf. So Taraf. And it means to tear, rend, pluck, to tear, to be torn in pieces, to be torn in pieces, okay? Which is the point, it says to provide food. To so the point is to be torn in pieces, okay? So if you go back, all right, it says Benjamin shall raven as a wolf, okay? When a wolf, all right, sees his prey, it goes and tears them into pieces, all right, but before it does it, it howls, okay? All right, wolves howl before they tear their prey, okay? Specifically, let's get some reasons why do wolves howl, all right, real quick. 
It says, why do wolves howl? A wolf's howl is a vocalization, which means that it's a sound produced in order to communicate. But what are they communicating? And with whom? Wolves howl to communicate their location to other pack members and to ward off rivaling packs from their territory. Okay. So to ward off rivaling packs. Okay. Um, to communicate. Okay. But wolves howl before they get their prey. Okay. And in this precept, the tribe of Benjamin are going to howl. Okay. Before. Okay. Uh, they're going to howl meaning utterance. Okay. Through song. All right. Speech. Poetry. Before they get their prey. Just like a wolf howls before they get their prey and tears them into pieces. All right. The tribe of Benjamin. Okay. A specific indicator is them howling by utterance, poetry, um, music before they get their prey. All right. And what's the prey? Okay. The prey is, the, is America. Okay. The prey is Esau. Esau being the so-called white man. The Edomite race. So-called Caucasians. That's the prey. And Benjamin's howl, they howl, okay, they raven, all right, through music, all right, poetry, like I kept saying, all right. So if you just check up on Google, burn down Babylon, okay, burn down Babylon, okay, go to images. Okay, you'll see a lot of West Indian culture, okay, because West Indians, right, specifically the tribe, Saka, not the tribe, but specifically Jamaicans, okay, are known for chanting through utterance, song, the downfall of their prey. And what's the prey? Babylon, okay, which is America. Babylon the Great, according to the scriptures, is America. Okay, your prey being the oppressor, Esau, so-called white man. Okay, so howling as a wolf, a wolf howls and gets his prey, tears them to pieces. Okay, the tribe of Benjamin is their specific indicator is them, all right, howling through utterance. Okay, and getting their prey. All right, which is talked about Babylon's inevitable destruction, America's inevitable destruction, because everything points to America's destruction, okay? You had, of course, West Indians during the 1900s coming out with songs about America's downfall, and they're, of course, saying Babylon, okay? About them not being, talk about the oppressed, being in an oppressed state, them rising from that oppressed state, Okay, which is going to happen, all right? Because the Israelites are going to awake and rise from their oppressed state. Okay, the curses are not going to be on them for far much longer. And they're going to be put on their enemies, okay? But the elect of the nation of Israel will be saved, okay? First and foremost for this exodus, this great deliverance, Okay? All of his, all the Israel, all of the Israelites are going to eventually be saved in the kingdom through reincarnation. But the elect, the 144,000, the one third, all right, are going to be saved during this great deliverance. It's not going to be like all Israelites being saved like in ancient Egypt being delivered. It's not going to be like that for this time. So it says, Benjamin shall raven as a wolf. Okay. So raven. Okay, through sound, okay, music, poetry, speech, talk about the downfall of Babylon. In the morning, he shall devour the prey. When it says in the morning, it's talking about the morning, okay, the coming in of the day of our kingdom, the Israelites' kingdom, so called Black, Spain, Native Americans. It says in the morning, he shall devour the prey, okay, the prey being, of course, Esau. The nation of Edom, so-called white man, okay, America, this system, right, devour the prey, 
just like a wolf devours its prey. Okay. It says, and at night, which is the so-called white man's night, okay, his midnight, okay, which would be our, the, the, the starting of our um, age, our morning, okay, our kingdom, okay, it says at night he shall divide the spoil, okay, so through this precept, right, doctrine of great millstone points to you so-called West Indians being the tribe of Benjamin, okay, according to the Bible. So wake up to your heritage, all right? Because the Most High is going to bring under chaos to this world. Demons, nightmares, cannibalism, World War III, martial law, natural disasters, animals bringing out zoos. Bad things are coming to this world, okay? And if you don't want to be a part of that, you're supposed to fear the Most High, you how about you shy? You're supposed to fear him before it's too late. Okay. We got another precept. This is First Chronicles 7 and 6. The sons of Benjamin, Bela and Becker, and Jediel, three, and the sons of Bela, Esbon and Uzi, and Uziel, and Jeremoth, and Iri, five, heads of the house of their fathers, mighty men of valor. And that's the point. And were reckoned by their genealogies 20 and 2030 and 4. So the tribe of Benjamin is a mighty tribe, okay, a powerful tribe, mighty men of valor, okay. Back in the ancient world, okay, before America, okay, back in the land, the holy land of Jerusalem, all right, Benjamites were skilled warriors, okay, Israelite men. All right, you so-called, what you will call Jamaicans, all right, you keep repping that, um, I'm a bad boy, I'm a bad boy, okay, it's through your spirit, okay, you got, of course, the same boat, all right, you got Jamaican track stars, all right, you got West Indian uh, um, UFC fighters, okay, because it's through your spirit, you're a mighty tribe, okay, mighty men of valor. Okay, of course, we got Benjamites in West Coast of Africa, Jamaica, all right, Bahamas. Man, there's Israelites everywhere. Okay, but centralization stock is centralized in, okay, the West Indies. Okay, the tribe of Benjamin, mighty men of valor. Deuteronomy chapter 33 and verse 12. And of Benjamin, he said, the beloved of the Lord Yahweh Shai shall dwell in safety by him, and the Lord shall cover him all the day long, and he shall dwell between his shoulders. Okay, so the Mosai, okay, has a special connection with the tribe of Benjamin. Okay, a beloved tribe, beloved of the Lord. Okay, son of the right. Okay. All right, special connection. All right, but as of now, you West Indians are under a cursed vibration. Purely wicked. Love just partying all day and doing wicked, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, black magic. Okay, just doing wicked customs and culture. All right. Just because you're living on the islands, it doesn't mean you're in paradise. Okay, wake up out of this sleep. All right, come back to the Heavenly Father because he's going to destroy a lot of people. There's a lot of wicked that's going to be put to death. Okay? All right? Just because you think you're a bad boy, all right, you're a bad thing, okay? It, it doesn't mean you're in the kingdom of heaven, all right? That's a cursed mind frame. All right. Okay, so let me get Romans chapter 13 and verse 11. In that known the time that now is a high time to wake out sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Okay. So a lot. It's a high time to wake out sleep. All right. Just wake up. 
All right. And the most size through the spirit going to make certain Israelites wake up and certain Israelites just be put to death. So that's a scary thing to hear. So if you're in a right mind frame as a so-called West Indian. Uh, um, seek the Lord while he may be found. OK, follow the law, says commandments, the best of ability, rehearse the righteous acts through faith. OK, because faith is ultimately going to get you saved out of America and other parts of the globe. But showing your faith, you have to show it by works and actions, okay? Not just saying you love the Most High. Not just saying it, okay? You have to actually perform, show Him why you love Him. First John 5, First John chapter 5, verse 3. The love of the Most High is keeping His commandments. And His commandments are not grievous. They're not the hardest things on planet Earth specifically to the point where you cannot do it. You cannot be perfect. Of course, no one is, except, of course, when the Lord was on the scene in Rome, Yahweh Shai. But you, of course, you can still strive for the Most High's mercy, because that's what we're all striving for, the Most High's mercy. This is Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 22. That ye put off the concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt, according to the deceitful lust, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man, which after Yahweh is creating righteousness and true holiness. Okay, so put off the old man, the old man of thinking, your old ways. Okay, eating shrimp, crab, abominable foods. Okay, um, uh, uh, Saki, what else? Committing adultery, sleeping with another man's wife. Okay, whoever it pertains to, uh, um. Hating knowledge, just wanting to know something, and that's the only level you want to be at for the rest of your life. Okay, put off being simple, okay, and just um, seek to be renewed by the Most High, okay, and put on the new man, which after Yahweh is created in righteousness and true holiness, so being separate, okay, because these laws, and commandments, all right, this heritage. Of being an Israelite makes us separate from the other nations. It makes us different in a good way, the best way. Okay. So let's get Matthew 3 and 2. In saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So repent. Okay. Change your mind, change your ways. Okay. Of course, it's easier said than done, but it is possible through the Lord Yahweh Shai. The beginning is fear. Okay, fear is a great motivator to make you do certain things. All right. Of course, Deuteronomy 10 and 12. So what does the Most High require of you? What's the requirement? And now, Israel, what doeth the Lord thy power require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy power. So first thing first, fear the Most High. Okay. Fear his power to control this realm and to jack things up, to wreck people's lives. Okay, fear that power to walk in all his ways and to love him. Love, of course, following his commandments and to serve the Lord thy power with all thy heart and with all thy soul. So serving him, okay. Right, because the Lord, Yahweh Shai, he died for the elect of the nation of Israel. All right. And if you, of course, seek righteousness, all right, seek being holy, seek mercy, seek salvation, okay? You're basically saying his sacrifice was not in vain, okay? Because a lot of people think, a lot of people are living, two-thirds of the nation, Israel, so-called Black Spanish Native Americans, they're living, okay, in a lifestyle, basically saying the Lord's sacrifice was in vain. It was worthless, okay? When the, the Lord died for all the nation of Israel, first and foremost, the elect, but all Israelites could be saved. Okay. And the Lord was a so-called black man, which you'll call a Negro. All right. Part of the royal family. He was an Israelite. Okay. So West Indians. All right. The tribe of Benjamin, son of the right. Okay. Ben Yum Yum. All right. Mighty men of valor. Right, powerful tribe of Israel, beloved of the Most High, when they're in their right 
mind frame. So Lord willing, this veil is edify. All praise to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai Hashem Rakakadash, utter peril and claiming to America, which is coming, which is due, it's inevitable, and shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, Yasharala, shalom.